Hello and welcome to another pixelforlife.com video tutorial. In this lesson we're going to take this contact form that Steve here created and we're going to try to code it so that it actually works. Now I don't know if we'll be able to get it exactly the way that Steve has coded it because um, he is just awesome and I'm not but uh, we'll do our best. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to hide everything except for the background because I want to go ahead and get this background saved. So I'm going to save this. I'll go ahead and create a new folder called contact form. I'll go into that and I want to save this as a JPEG. And I'll just put this as BG and hit save. And then I'll hit OK. Now what I want to do then is I want to go ahead and use my color picker and I want to select the very bottom color of this fade so that I know what it is, which is right here. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this, and I'll hit OK. Now, I'm going to be using Go Live for my uh, contact form um, coding. However, Dreamweaver works a lot like uh, Go Live because Go Live is older technology. I'd use Dreamweaver, but I don't have it on this computer. Um, but again, it's almost the exact same process, and you can just actually uh, copy the coding that I'm doing because I'm going to uh, put the project file up on the website as well. Um, or you can just type it in by hand following along on the screen. So it's totally up to you. So I'm going to go ahead and go to New and hit OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all of this extra head meta content here and just leave the title. I'm then going to get rid of this XML part here and this, which just makes this a plain HTML file that's good to go. I'm then going to go to my CSS editor and I'm going to go to New, Style, and Body. And if I go to the source code, you can see here, this is what needs to be typed into your document to be able to create the body tag. I'm then going to go ahead and put this as a URL. And I'm going to select my contact form and BG. And you'll see here that it's there. I'm then going to put this vertically aligned to the top. And then I'm going to change the background color to the color that we already selected here. And I'm then going to save this page in contact form as contactme.html. And when I do that, you see this here. This changes to just plain BG. And if you look at the source code, you're good to go. This is exactly how it should be typed in. I just use Go Live because it's a little bit quicker for me to just uh, do it all uh, by hand, uh, with the WYSIWYG editor that's built in and then copy the coding over to a cleaner um, section, but that's just how I like to do things. So, all right. So now that we've got that, I'm going to go ahead and move on. And now that I've done that, I'm going to hide the background layer. And you'll see here we have this box. Now this box has a little bit of a fade on it um, that Steve created, but we're not going to be able to actually use that portion of it. I don't think. Um, I mean, we could mess around with it until we figured it out, but by the time we do that, we'll just go ahead and do something that's going to look kind of similar. So what we're going to do here is simply go into our source code, and we're going to create a new div align equals tag, and we're just going to put call this contact uh, outside. And after we do that, we'll close off that tag. We'll then drop down a couple lines and close that div tag. And we'll just put some text that says text is right here for now. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and delete these P tags. We don't need those. Now you can see here the text is in there. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new style. And I'm just going to put this as div. And then I'm going to rename this to um, contact outside I believe that's what we called it contact outside yes we did and once I've done that I'm going to go ahead and first of all change the background color to a nice gray color and we need to make sure that we um, Arr, stop acting up you're stupid why is that being stupid 
And after we've done that, I'm going to go ahead and set the size here. I'm going to put the width to be, what did Steve use? I can't even remember what he used. He's just way too quick. Um, he did... We'll just get an approximation here. Approximately 400 by 350. We'll just go by that. 350. And that looks good. Uh, just trying to remember what else we need to do here. Um, we need to make sure that we round the corners. So to actually round the corners, we're going to go into our source code here and we're going to input some coding. We're going to be using CSS3 for this. The CSS3 will not show up in our Go Live um, window pane, um, and it also will not show up in any older browsers. Um, it'll just show up as square edges, which is fine. But you know, for any new people, uh, new new browser people like Internet Explorer 8, uh, Firefox, etc., they're going to support this. So that's why we want to do this. Now, what we're going to do here is simply. Uh, drop this code in here and basically it's our border radius code and this border radius code um, has to actually be special specified for the uh, and I'm just going to drop all these down here whoa I didn't want to do that these need to be uh, the, the the border radius needs to be um, and I actually dropped this in the wrong place this has got to go here and then and we can leave these ones together I guess that's okay and our border radius here is uh, 15 pixels um, I believe Steve had his set on like around um, 15 to 25 something like that I don't remember it we'll, we'll figure it out but uh, that that's good so that's good and it's just border dash radius semicolon space 15 pixels um, end colon so should be good to go. And one thing we need to do is go into source code. And I have this set as a line for some reason. I don't know why. This needs to be set as class. And then when we go back to layout, um, we should be able to see this uh, result a lot easier now. And there you go. Make sure to put your period for your div tag, and then you can see our text there. And again, we already have our size set, but it's being a little funky because we're in this browser. So we're going to go ahead and put some padding on here. We're just going to put five pixels around the whole thing. And once we've done that, I'm going to go to edit here, and I'm going to add, uh, go to my computer, local disk, program files, Mozilla, Firefox, and then we're going to grab that and hit OK. And when I do that, you will see here that our uh, object appears on the screen with our rounded corners as we talked about. So. Uh, we're good to go in that aspect. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, we need to we need to make the whole thing to be centered. Um, so we'll choose absolute and then we'll check that out. And these are gonna, that's going to get annoying creating new ones of those all the time. And let's see here. That's the center and center. All right, and that looks pretty good for right now. All right, so now we need to go ahead and actually create our fields inside of this uh, contact form. And this is where it gets to be a little tricky because um, Steve has these with rounded corners. And while we could use CSS3 to um, go ahead and uh, you know work with that, um, at times, it's a little difficult because uh, it doesn't really convert over the right way. Uh, not only that, but this text here, um, I really want to have that as an image by itself because if you actually select texts, uh, text formats in a CSS document, yes, they will show up, but at times they have troubles as well. So I don't want to run into that problem, that's all. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and drop back over into the div class here and I'm going to go ahead and start with um, just putting your name here 
and your email. And what was the other one Steve had? He had what's on your mind. What's on your mind? Like that. And now we just need to create the fields for these. So we're going to go ahead and again, I'm just going to use the, the pre-made stuff to kind of make this video a little bit faster. You'll probably have to end up typing them in by hand, but um, we'll just go ahead and drop this in here. And it's just input type text, name, text field, name, size, 24. And we're just going to drop in two of those. And then on the what's your mind, we're going to drop in a text box here as such. All right, and rows, we're going to put this up to 15. Columns, we'll leave it 40. Yeah, we'll leave those at we'll leave that at 40. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and type p in the p tag. That was a fail. And I actually need to put that one there down here. And now you can see our text fields are aligned a lot better like this should be. Uh, going to go ahead and go back to our contact form and this stuff here all needs to be um, it needs to be centered but it needs to be have a straight line so the way we're going to do that is um, I think this is going to look so good when it's done guys it really is and you can see here it's our stuff is currently too big so uh, let's go ahead and make this. Let's just make this a little bit smaller, like so. Let's see if we can fit it in that box. Yeah, that's a lot better. And alrighty. And we'll just go ahead and put a line equals center here. We'll take a look at that, and you can see here this stuff's all nice and centered now. And that looks a little bit better. And we need to make sure we put our question mark here. All right, now we're going to go ahead and simply uh, bold this text here. And you can just use the plain B tag, or you can use bold. It's, it's totally your call. I'm also going to italicize it here. All right, that's emphasize tag. I don't know what I'm doing. Don't worry about that. All right, so now that we have our text bolded, let's go back to our body tag and go to selecting our, um, and we're just going to hit cursive on that, and that's going to make our text stand out a little bit, so it almost looks a lot more like what we had before. And then we'll go ahead and come into here, and we'll just put, uh, we'll put this text here. Send me a compliment. All right, and so we're starting to get there. Now, one thing we need to do is we're going to straighten this coding out here a little bit. Uh, we need to go ahead and make all of these uh, p tags here with these fields. We need to go ahead and simply uh, actually put them in a form field. Now, a form field primarily is like this form ID form you know etc etc so but I'm just gonna drop it there take this and drop it down here and then come back up here and grab this form and we're gonna come inside of our contact form and inside of this and we're gonna drop it right here all right and now that we have that you'll see and we'll, we actually have it displayed here and this is what's gonna allow our form to actually be exported out all right, now we also need to make sure that we get this button on here because we don't want to just want to use the default um, stupid looking button. So we're going to go ahead and again use a P tag. We'll close it off here as well. And I'm going to paste this in here. And basically, uh, this is already ready to go for us. We need to, to go ahead and, and save our, our button image here out, which we can do now. And I'm just going to 
select a little bit of stuff on either side of it like that and we'll go into our contact form submit button dot gif and submit dash button dot gif and I don't know what the size of our image is but uh, here we go there we go and then I want to align that right and we'll go ahead and take a look at that that looks pretty good there. Uh, I personally would like it. I, I think I'm going to center it because I actually like it centered a little bit better than what Steve-O had, but that's just me. So I'm just going to make sure that's centered. And with that, we're ready to um, basically go ahead and, and code this bad boy. Uh, but before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this align here because I actually liked it better when it was just all by itself and then we'll do our actual CSS to it to uh, move it over and so we'll go to contact form and on our margins on the or padding on the left we'll put it this one to uh, 45 and we'll preview that that's getting a little bit better we need to put it about 55 is probably gonna be just right actually so we'll change this to 55 and again this is the coding here that you see that you need and you can take a screen capture of it or you can download the files as I said and it'll all be in there and that's actually exactly what we need right there so the only thing left is the send me a compliment text and we need to make sure that this is a little bit different looking it needs to be cursive um, I decided we're gonna go ahead and make a cursive outside of the uh, um, or in the CSS3 even though sometimes it has a chance to mess it up just cuz I've decided to Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and create a new style and we'll just choose our H1 and then when we actually get it, we'll just change it over to strong, which is actually going to allow us to edit all of the text we have. And you see here, it changes instantly. I'm going to put that down to 1 EM and then we're going to go ahead and we're just going to choose a different font set here, which we're going to start with this Trebet MS. And that looks pretty good. This here, we're going to actually change to a H2 and then we'll go ahead and choose our style H2 change that to just one again and and like that and we're gonna go ahead and come to our text here we're gonna get rid of the strong on it so that way it's not uh, having conflicting um, tags on it and with that we are good to go with all of the styling so it's it's not exactly like Stevo's and we could actually create CSS tags for these fields and do things more to them um, but we don't really necessarily need to uh, it's all open to personal, you know, option. But um, if you did want to, you just create another div class with the name of this field, and these fields, of course. Um, but I will go ahead and make these be as long as this. And just so that they match up like so. And now that I've done that, let's go ahead and get our actual form script. So all we're going to do is we're going to go to Google and type in form mail. And the first one that comes up is Matt Scripps Archive Form Mail. Um, this is the one I've been using for a really long time. We're just going to download it in zip format. And download selected files. And you'll see here we can save it. And we're going to go into our contact form and save the zip file there. And now that we've done that, I'm going to go ahead and close out of Firefox. And now I'm going to go ahead and open that up. So let's do that. And you can see here our form mail script is opened up. So I'm going to extract form mail here. And then I'll delete that. In our form mail folder, we have another form mail folder. In our form mail and our readme script, all we need is this form mail. We're going to copy this. And then we're going to go back to our contact form, create a new folder, and just call it CGI-bin. Drop it into here by pasting. Open this up. 
and now that it's open we need to edit a couple of fields in here and it's pretty self-explanatory it kinda explains what everything through the script is it's a very detailed detailed script um, we don't really have to work it work on that but basically um, this at reference has script archive here we need to change this to our URL which is um, I'm just gonna use pixel for life dot com and keep scrolling down I'm not sure how many more things we need to change I haven't done this uh, that many times but um, okay, these are all good here. I think that's probably it, but we'll just keep going just in case. Yeah, it's looking really good, though. I'm liking this. Then it it automatically tells things to say after the form is submitted, like "Thank you for filling out this form," etc. Um, but you don't have to worry about any of that. I mean, you can change it if you want, but it's just generic stuff, so uh, it's totally up to you. And this is just giving them a little bit of a prop here for their formal script, so I'll just leave that, but you can take that out if you want. Um, and we're already past the part that says do not edit below this line, so uh, I think we're good with that. And this says formal.pl. So what we're going to do is simply come to here, CGI dash bin forward slash form mail dot PL targets going to be um, self and no encoding methods going to be post and then we're that's it you're that's basically it but if you actually want this to submit to something you need to say which recipient it's going to go to so we go back to our form stuff here and we need to go ahead and use these hiddens and I'm just going to drop these and the first one here is going to be recipient and then you put in your email address which ours is help at pixelforlife.com we'll then copy this over paste it this one we're going to put as subject and this is going to be the contact us form and we'll paste another one in and this one here is going to be our um, redirect and redirect and this is just basically the page we're going to be redirected to after the form is submitted instead of their generic message and this can be thank you html and with that we are good to go so our form is now done and it would actually work if we uploaded it to the internet um, I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. Uh, I sure enjoyed teaching it to you. And uh, oh, required. We need the required one. That's right. Thank you, memory. All right. So we're gonna put another one here. And we're gonna call it required. Now, what's always gonna be required is your name, email address, and this. Granted, but we want to go ahead and we want to make sure that these are definitely uh, done. So we're gonna go ahead and name these to name and email, and then. MSG for message and our required field here we're going to put name comma email comma message and what this allows is if we try to submit the form without these things filled out it'll just tell us uh, you know hey you need to fill out the form so please do that and with that we are done so hope you guys enjoyed it we'll see you soon uh, keep subscribing keep telling people about us and be ready because we're at the 2,000 subscriber mark pretty close now and when we are getting a little bit closer to 2,500 we may run a contest so stay tuned and check out our website pixelforlife.com thanks guys